Delivering a great summer camp program is paramount to the success of our camps. But what often gets overlooked is the importance of public relations, how we are perceived by the outside world, by the other folks who don't attend our camps and drink our Kool-Aid, who don't really understand what it is that we do, because those folks determine our reputation and ability to succeed often just as much, if not more, than our diehard camp communities. So how do we get that word out? Helping us today is Michael Sachs, a successful PR guy and camp parent who will bridge the gap for us. This is the Day Camp Pod. Welcome back, everybody, to the Day Camp Podcast. I'm Andy Pritikin, Director of Liberty Lake in the Philly suburbs of New Jersey. I'm Sam Thompson from Crystal Lake Park District, Crystal Lake, Illinois. And we are joined today by my friend Michael Sachs. Bax, a guy with sometimes more energy than me. That is right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, Michael, tell us how 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 is it that uh, that you ended up here on the Day Camp Podcast? You know, what, what's your little uh, camp journey and PR journey? Andy and Sam, it's so good to be with you today. My journey started as a youngster. You know, camp was a very big part of my childhood. Uh, throughout uh, when I was, I have two children. They're now eight and ten. And when I was their age, day camp was a very big deal. We looked forward to it. It was not an extension of school. It was like school, but outside. It was all recess all the time. But you were learning about arts and crafts and nature and drama, and you were learning more about sports and you were making friendships. And it was a lot of fun. That seeped into overnight camp. I spent quite a few years over at Camp Airy in, in Maryland. And then I uh, spent some time with the North Carolina School of Arts camp. And I always thought the camp was an important experience to get to know myself on another level, to get to know myself with other kids that I wasn't normally around during the school year. So of course, when our kids were of age, we decided we were going to take a look at the camps around the area. And that brought me to the great Andy Pritikin in the land of Liberty Lake. Uh, we were immediately impressed with everything that Liberty Lake had to offer, but I was especially impressed, and I'm not blowing smoke here, with my pal Andy and his dedication to making sure that kids had a full summer experience, really identifying who they were and identifying what they're good at and what they can learn more about and where they can express themselves. And pretty soon Andy and I were working in tandem and it, for the past five and a half years, it's been my pleasure to promote Liberty Lake, promote the efforts of Andy Pritikin and now his overnight camp experience uh, with uh, Camp Southwoods. So that's what brings me here today. Public relations has been a big part of our journey, Andy and my journey for the past five and a half years. And I'm anxious to share it with our listeners. Yeah, and, and thank you, Michael. And, and one of the fascinating facts about Michael is that he is the creator of 1-800-LEMON-LAW. All right, that thing that creator. you see on- I didn't create it, I <laughs> promote it. Uh, yes. Promoter of it. I have right? for the past 22 years have been the spokesperson and the, the lead consumer advocate for 1-800-LEMON-LAW, which is the oldest and largest automotive consumer advocacy firm in the country. And we provide free legal help to distressed drivers with uh, who have vehicle problems under state and federal law. So it's a, it's a whole other community-based advocacy. It kind of goes hand in hand because like camp, we're servicing consumers, we're providing them a service that, that they need, that they want. And uh, yeah, it goes hand in hand. I like helping people. So camps help people, 1-800-LEMON-LAW helps people. Right. So, so, you know, this whole PR thing, I, I just, I cannot stress enough how PR is important for all camps, whether it's a private business like Liberty Lake, whether it's uh, a, a business like TIFFs, which is inner city, and they're trying to get grant money from uh, government agencies, right? Or even Sam's, who's a municipal program, but you know, her municipality does a lot of things. Her, her park district, they do tons of different stuff and they have to advocate and show how awesome they are in order to get budget money for the next year, well, right? Happened, In order to- During the pandemic, where you were such a vocal uh, champion for camps during the pandemic, that's a huge part of public relations as well. Right. And and I think that most camps, they function in a world where they, they do great things for, for the lucky kids and families that send their kids to them. And then for everybody else, they have no idea what they do. They watch Wet Hot American Summer. Maybe they watch Meatballs or those Ernest Goes to Camp movies or, uh, you know, Michael, Sam's camp is uh, is Crystal Lake. Okay, that's the name of the lake that they're on. So I mean, they could be thinking about horror movies. So um, 
so, so, so it's up to us to educate people because remember folks, okay, prior to the pandemic, so I think it's gotten a little better, but prior to the pandemic, only one out of six kids estimated was going to camp in America, okay? So most people don't have a clue of what we do. And sometimes they get the wrong clue. They think that we're just wasting our time and playing kickball with kids all day. They think it's just a country club for a bunch of rich kids. They're like, who knows what they think? They drive past our, our driveway, they see the big sign, and they come up with their own connotations. So it's up to us to spread the word and educate everybody. Okay. And I think the Liberty Lake story is an interesting one, because we started here from scratch. And we had to build a reputation. And I can tell you that the first 10 years of me trying to work with my township, it was a crazy hardship because they had no idea what I was doing here. And um, and once I sort of figured out how to get the word out, and of course, more people that come is the, the better word of mouth. But, but even so, I, I think there, there's not that many kids in the immediate like five mile radius of my camp that come here. Right. So, so it's it's a, it's up on us to get the word out there, whether it's media or inviting people to our places, and doing things for the public that show that, like Michael said, you know, our our job is that we serve others, right? We are leaders, right? We serve others, okay? But it shouldn't just be that we're serving the people that are fortunate enough to come here too. We have to spread the word and get people here and show them what we're doing and take pictures and use social media and all that kind of thing and it's a real it's a real minestrone soup isn't it michael yeah well you know the, the thing that i enjoy working with you about is you get that you know it's it's a much larger picture than just servicing the campers that we currently have and their parents when you talk about public relations you're talking about a variety of different publics publics that are impacted by your camp whether or not they go to your camp so let's start with the neighborhood the folks surrounding your camp the businesses surrounding your camp those businesses can help you promote that camp. There, you know, every year Andy has community events. Here's a variety of different community businesses that come and have booths at the camp. Rita's, Water Ice, uh, Kuman, uh, different community organizations, nonprofit organizations. They are bringing new audiences to the camp and they are also promoting the camp to their constituents so it's, and their customers. So really that's one public, your neighborhood, your politicians, your, your local politicians, you're doing something good, you're, you're helping kids, you're providing, in many situations, many camps provide extra programming. Uh, Sam's camp is a municipal camp. The local government officials should know about your camp, what you do, how you do it, et cetera. There's also those folks who are not necessarily parents, maybe they're other uh, adults servicing kids, we talk about teachers and we talk about superintendents. Andy and I worked on a program last year with Camp Southwoods, which is one of his overnight camps that he owns part of. And we saluted amazing students who did amazing accomplishments during the pandemic. And the superintendents nominated these students. The students got to go uh, for very, very little nominal fees. The local newspaper picked it up. Not only did they write a whole article about it, but then they wrote a separate editorial about how much they supported and appreciated the camp for really taking care of the neighborhood. So these are just a variety of examples of different publics besides, the, the, of course, your parents and your potential campers. And let's not forget your staff, because we are always looking for more staff and we have to retain our current staff. So these are, when you look at public relations, you need to start by setting a road map a roadmap of every single public impacted by what you do. And you will find that you probably have 10 to 20 of those set publics. And then you create campaigns and goals and objectives for each of them, which is why every summer I exhaust Andy to the core. Mm -hmm. so, Michael, the the thing with municipal as well, we're in the public eye all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a lot of, uh, of people interested are not interested in the camp that have nothing to do with camp, uh, but they spread the word as well, which is always um, nerve wracking. So. Well, social media is a whole, and we will get into that, I think separately, but social media and the impact social media has had in the past five to 10 years has helped the camp industry and hurt the camp industry, no doubt mm -hmm. about it. And with municipal, Sam, a lot of the taxpayers feel that they own your camp, that they pay your salary. So they feel this ownership as if they're your bosses, even though she's 64 years old, she doesn't have kids, she has cats, and you don't have a cat camp. 
<laughs> yeah, well, it's true. I, and and I think going back to, I want to drill down on some of the things you said, Michael, because in, in typical Michael fashion, he just he, he spouts ideas. So, um, so, so when he talks about the different publics, right, uh, a lot of times the word that I use is stakeholder. Right. Who are the stakeholders? Who, who are the people that care about you? And in Sam's case, yes, that that older lady with the cats, she pays taxes. Right. And it goes to the schools and it goes to the rec programs and stuff. And, and it is important to her. You know, when she sees happy kids on on her Facebook or whatever it is, that makes her happy, too. There's no doubt about it. Um, and it makes her complain less, which is even more important, especially when she's one of Sam's neighbors. So, um in regard to the businesses, right? We talked, uh, Michael mentioned um, reaching out to businesses and, and synergizing with them. So I'm a big part of my local chamber of commerce and I am always looking to make relationships. And, you know, just like I made a relationship with Michael, right? I mean, we could talk about bartering with camp parents one day. That could be a whole episode. But um, there are lots, you know, who are these businesses out there that, that, co that, that, that also, serve the same stakeholders, <laughs> right? At, you know, and and influence the people who we need to be influencing, right? And like at Liberty Lake, we just, the first one that came to mind is that we do a big, big thing with magic cards and Dungeons and Dragons and stuff because of our Renaissance fair. We have that vibe here. And and we, fi we find the local places that sell that stuff, that that have Friday night magic and that, that are having events at those places. And we get them to come and judge our events here at camp. And even, you know, they could even sell stuff to kids on family night. Like we don't really care. Um, and then we stick their logo on our stuff and we make social media posts about them. So we're scratching their back. They're scratching ours. You know, they have people come into their stores and they see stuff of, about Liberty Lake there, right? We've done things in situations where we have uh, discounts at these businesses, right? So who are the big businesses in your areas? Who are the big employers at Liberty Lake? It's Comcast and Lockheed Martin. Those are the big ones. So when we needed campers, you know, we went to their HR people and we said, hey, listen, 5% off for all families who have been here before who are already coming to my camp and 10% off for new people, right? And then they promoted it within, with, with that, with, throughout their um you know, ways of doing it. And it's a huge benefit for their families. So, you know, it's, there's a whole lot of that mutual back scratch. I want to also talk do. about your new project, which just premiered last year to great success. And now you want to really continue to build it. Your grown up camp where you partnered with a local brewery, which I thought right. was amazing. Right. And, and you two are synergizing, creating an event that brings new notoriety, new people to the camp. Yeah. These grown-ups have kids. No, it's a great point, Michael, because if I decided to do grown-up camp on my own and I just promoted it through my camp families and stuff like that, yeah, we'd probably get 150 right. you know, parents that come out, right? But when the local brewery and all the people that love that beer promote it, then all of a sudden we got 500 and we're hoping for a thousand this year right. because those people, you know, it, it just, it's a crossover. Absolutely. Right. Again, it's a crossover. By the way, most of those people that came to grown up camp, they were parents that were happy to have a day out without their kids. Yes. And then they came and said, holy crap, this place is awesome. Maybe I'll send my kids here. Right. It worked out. Another thing that Michael said was politicians. OK. Uh, and, and whatever you think of politicians, they're really important. OK. It's like an insurance policy for when things go wrong at your camp, when an inspector is being too much of a pain in the butt to you and all that kind of stuff, when you're having issues with your local township. Then you can go to your state representative. You can go to your county representative and those kind of things, right? So yeah, you of course you can host events, fundraising events for them and that kind of stuff. But even if you don't want to get political like that, because I know a lot of nonprofit camps are like, well, it's not in our bylaws and you know it's against this and that, right? But one thing that you certainly can do is have them visit, right? Contact these politicians now and invite them out to camp this summer. Most politicians, their summertime is really slow. And you know what politicians at camp is? Let's just get to the point. It's an unbelievable photo op for them and for you. He's and that no will make it into you. That will make it into your newspaper yeah. in two seconds. There will be no thought process. The newspaper will be like, that is awesome. What are the name of the kids and what town are they from? And, and, and bam, it is all over. It's going to be on their social media, yeah. right? Like, like the, the, that is such a, a, a low hanging fruit and easy thing to do. But what happens is that we as camp operators, we're always in this like quadrant of 
holy crap, we got to get this stuff done. And that doesn't seem very important, right? We're more worried about staffing and making sure that we have enough kickballs and all that kind of stuff. And then we forget that we could be doing that. So this is the kind of thing that just is like the burying your acorns thing in the winter to do now is reach out to them or have somebody that has a connection with them and make it their job to do. Because having them come on like July 17th in the middle of summer with when you're just the last thing you're going to think about, but then you walking around with them for an hour and a half or two hours. I have friends that, that have had these politicians go over zip lines and right. things like that. I mean, what unbelievable photo ops to be able to do. And, 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 the, you know, this is their constituents. So they're happy to do it too. And, and to be showing off. Um, Michael mentioned t- teachers. So when we first started Liberty Lake with zero campers and we were like, how do we get the word out? How do we get kids here? Well, who are the biggest influencers with parents? It's the kids' teachers, right? And by the way, most teachers don't, I'm, I'm, I'm making, uh, you know, <laughs> don't need to send their kids to camp because they're off in the summer, right? They so, want to. <laughs> that they want to, right? So what we did on day one at Liberty Lake is we put in a substantial teacher discount, which by the way, we expanded immediately to anybody that works in the damn school discount mm-hmm. because frankly, the secretary is more influential than the uh, than the teacher, right? So so anybody that works in the school discount from preschoolers, I don't care if it's the little kinder care down the street, okay, all the way up until high school, right? Those public school kind of teachers, if they work in a school at my, at my place, they get 5% off, which by the way, is not a ton of money anyway, but it's showing that you care. It gets printed in all like the teacher's union books and gets out there. And then it pushes a teacher over the edge to send their kid for like the minimum amount two or three weeks to your camp or something like that. And then if their kid has an amazing experience, they're teachers, they understand how important it is. And they're telling all the kids in their class, they're telling all the camp parents. And when they're talking to their friends, okay, down at the ice cream shop, and they're talking about what you do this summer. And the teacher says, I send my kids to this camp. Mm -hmm. My God, that is worth its weight in gold. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, My friend, Jonathan Gold, who has been on this podcast, he took it a step further and he said, where do these kids go to when he was starting his camp? And he thought pediatric dentists mm-hmm. and he's, he, cause his kid was going, his kids were going to his pediatric dentist that served like the entire town, a thousands of kids going there. And One he told this friends is a pediatric dentist. I want to hear this because I'm going to make, he told, he told the woman he, the, who was the head of the, the practice. He said, I will, your kids could come to my camp for free. And all you have to do is if they have a good time, tell people that's it that's all you gotta do and he is convinced that that is a reason why his camp took off in years three and four was because of this this woman i believe it andy we had um our school district came to us and they were having a problem with the teachers kids being in the classroom in the morning when they're supposed to be prepping and then when they had early release days when they're doing classes um they were having trouble finding sitters whatever so we made a deal with them that the any school staff could come to my before and after school for free from 8 to 8 30 and then from 2 to 3 on an early release day which solved the school district's problem introduced all those teachers to our staff that are year-round that are at camp and and other things and um once their kids had a good time then yes, they were signing up for additional things and trips and camps. So that worked out really well. It acclimates acclimates them and it gets them to find and explore something they weren't aware of, which is perfect. And the cat lady's happy because you're helping all the kids in the neighborhood. You're getting them off our lawn. Don't dismiss (laughs) the cat lady, right? I mean, in all seriousness, most day camps, Michael, are in areas that that bump up to like civilization, right? And on the other side of civilization is people living there. Okay, Sam has got a municipal camp program where the public saunters into her camp, like at, at the parks and at the lake, right? I mean, that's huge, that huge. huge PR thing. Uh, but before we go on, I do have to give it up for um, one of our sponsors, A.M. Skyer. And I say this right now, um, I, I, I'm trying not to shill too much for these folks because I love them so much, but but we had a serious situation here at Liberty Lake and, and it, you might hear some clanking and clonking in the background because we haven't 
electrician here doing work because our office got destroyed over uh, Christmas vacation. Um, uh, a burst frozen pipe happened and the place flooded and it ran for days and basically the office got destroyed. And uh, AM Skyer just popped in and, and did everything they needed to do. Had the insurance adjusters here the next day. Um, and, and, you know, they were writing checks for us even before things were being charged to us to make sure that we had the money to pay these contractors and serve pro and the HVAC and the electrician and the, uh, the guy that was checking out the uh, foundation and, and seeing where the cracks were and all that kind of stuff. So um, I could just tell you for myself and my, and my other friends uh, that have used AM Skyer that this is normal. Right. You know, I have friends that um, whose cafeterias burnt down the week before camp started, you know, and boom, they had a situation, you know, at, at their camps, uh, at their sleepaway camps or dining halls. Um, you, you want that kind of prompt thing. You want a human answering the phone, you know, and 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 quickly, you know, snapping into action. If you need their lawyers, you need their they have a PR person, too, by the way, Michael, that as helps. They right. Should. As they yeah. Should. As they an should. Excellent one, and an excellent one at that, because here we are talking about them. Yeah. So anyway, um, I just want to give it up to AM Skyer. Check them out at amskyer.com. They're the leading insurance and strategic partner for many of the finest camps in America. amskyer.com. All right, back to business here. So um, so we were talking about the community relations things. I, I just wanted to, to mention some of the other stuff that we've done here at Liberty Lake. So we had a situation where warehouses were encroaching upon us. And, you know, what did we do? We go out and, and we, we hire public relations folks and we hire marketing teams and all that kind of stuff, but it's getting the word out. And, and what helped in my warehouse battle was the fact that we had built a reputation already. And, and, and one of the things I, I, I did, Michael, this is before I met you, was I hired a PR company for a year. Mm -hmm. And I saw what they were doing and, and, uh, and I saw the press releases that they were writing. I was copied on them. And I basically, you know, after a year of paying these people a substantial amount of money, I just started doing it myself. And I started You're writing. Very press good at it. You're very well, good at it. You know, if there's a good writer on your staff, then put them to work, right? Write press releases. Uh, Michael will tell you that in this day and age, most media outlets, especially print media, okay, they are dying for content. Just send them content with smiling, happy kids at a camp and, be and it'll get in there. Because right? unfortunately, print media is dying and the budgets have been dying and the staffs have been dying and they really do need content. Now, keep in mind, and Andy is very good at this, the content cannot be just shill, shill, shill. The content has to be legitimate. It has to tell a story. It has to explain how your camp is benefiting the program and what's going on. The so public. Long Public. Benefiting the public. Benefit, oh, excuse me. How it's benefiting the public, excuse me. Uh, benefiting, you know, all the kids around and, and et cetera. So it's very important when you write this press release that you share exactly what the camp is doing and how it's benefiting the neighbors, the readers, the constituents. So the fact of the matter is, be sure that it's not a just a commercial because that will just be no. out. No, the, no, 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 no. Advertising no. department. Yeah. There's yeah. a fine it, line. There's a fine right. line. Right. Well, it, it's a pretty clear line, right? People people aren't stupid, especially in this day and age, you know, with, with all the stuff that's on the internet, you could tell when people are just selling exactly. versus being honest. Well, remember, so, in, in public relations, you are telling the story of your camp. So you, you right. want to explain the story, but you don't want to advertise, exactly. Right. And sometimes, you know, I write articles that are just about the good of camp. And, and my only caveat to the media people is just make sure that at the bottom it says Andy Pritikin, owner director of Liberty Lake Day Camp. And here's my website. You know, that's it. Like when you, you did know. the um, you just did an interview on PIX in New York. And, you know, that was right. a big New York television station. We don't have huge constituents coming from New York City. But the credibility of the fact that in the number one television market in the country, here's Andy talking about why it's important for kids to work at camp. And he's from Liberty Lake. And then we take this snippet and we put it all over our social media and we put it all over our yeah. materials and people go, oh, right. wow. Well, that's that's the important thing in this day and age is that if I get an article printed in the Chattanooga Press or if I'm on a television show in Arizona and my camp is in New Jersey, it doesn't matter because I'm going to take that that article that that there's an online version. I'm going to spread it around like 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 Skippy peanut butter, and I'm going to take that interview that that they do with me on some random. Michael has found some random internet shows, right? And, but but if that comes out nice, 
Come and, it, and it works well. That will get you thousands of views. Exactly. You will get that all over the place. You're establishing your credibility. And that's the important thing. In every relationship you're making, every interview you're setting, every event you're creating, every partnership you're creating, you're establishing your credibility. And that's what public relations is all about. Right. And guess what? When you get good at it, we had Good Morning America here, right? I've been on the Today Show. Like, and that doesn't just, you can start with that. But when you get good at it, now let's just talk about that for a second, Michael, because not every camp director is like me where I, I'm, I'm very you know happy to be blabbing in front of a camera, right? <laughs> Most camp directors don't have that necessarily, right? But what I do think is that there's someone in their organization who can't, yes. right? Exactly. Because if I couldn't do it, right? If I couldn't do it, I would be drafting Brandy. To do it in well, my that's, office. Brandy is your understudy. I mean, every, you have an understudy, and sometimes the television station or the radio station says, "Yeah, hey, we'd love to have Andy. Can we have a female voice as well, or can we have a child?" How many times have we had campers in television segments, and radio segments, mm -hmm. you counselors, and counselors, articulate kids? But the fact of the matter is, find yourself an ambassador. Andy has a staff of ambassadors, a team of them. We have Shelby, who's very proficient in social media. You have your photographer, your videographer. You have me. You have Nancy, who's your great marketing expert. You have, and then the grand poobah, you. Uh, find well, but that's, a, but that's a great point, Mike, because I think that camp operators are generally people who are sort of like proficient at a lot of things. And this is when we get to the conversation on Day Camp Podcast, where we talk about how when delegating is important oh, and yes. finding people who are really good at certain things, right? There's so many camps that are like, oh, I'm going to have my daughter do our social media. I'm going to have my daughter's friend. I'm going to have like that kind of thing, right? Oh, the marketing. Oh, well, you know, what's the big deal? We're just telling people how great we are. Like, no, no, this is really nuanced stuff. And you're going up. Like, remember, most people don't send their kids to camp. So right. you're competing with everything else that kids could possibly be doing so finding people who are really good at these things you're talking about mm -hmm. is is important and and paying them okay because that's and what it means to creating synergy between them is really important everyone should know what everyone else is doing because if you work together you will accomplish much more than if you work individually and that's why mm -hmm. I love working with you, Andy, because you have such an outstanding team and you give me access to these. Oh, well, but I drafted these people into it. These are not people who were necessarily looking for it. They didn't volunteer for this, right? <laughs> I convinced them to do it, that's right? True. But but let's look, look, look at what we did. A, I guess it was about a year ago. We did a thing in Center City, Philly on um, on their on their. I forgot what channel it was. It was I think it was a public television thing. And we did about why oh, yeah. you should send, uh, yeah, why you should work. We did it on the PBS affiliate. Right. We had a weekly program. Right. Um, it was wh yes. why, why you should, uh, why a summer camp job is important. And I took one of my, you know, freshman in college kind of guys who is just like this flamboyantly awesome, great talker. He doesn't mind getting up on stage. He's a drama guy. Right. And I got, I got him up there and he was, he was great. And they right? loved it. The, the they loved, so loved right. it. It was a nice creative. Way better than a 50 year old guy talk, talking about why it's great to send, you know, why to work at camp, right? Get a, a 19 year old. It's a million times better. I do want to point out one thing about your television appearances. And you, and we always try in every appearance, well, even when we bring, remember, we've done all those things over at the morning shows where the morning shows couldn't come to us. We used to bring the kids to Channel 17 and we'd mm -hmm. be in the parking lot. Andy Simulated Warren, camp. Here. Uh, yes, Andy's always there. So it's very important, even if you have these other ambassadors, you want to make sure, ideally, even if you're not the, the most um, enjoy being on camera, you're maybe a bit introverted, you want to make sure that your, your executive director is part of the publicity because they're recognizable to the parents and the kids and the staff. They're going to be working with them. And they can be part of it, but they don't have to be the star of the segment. What I love about what Andy does with every one of our television segments he has never, ever appeared in a shirt and tie, ever. He always <laughs> wears a baseball cap and a shirt with the- Michael, logo. You're, you're, the people that are listening to this podcast, 80% of them are wearing shorts right now in the Which middle of the I, want right, I just want you to understand that. Logo. Okay. <laughs> I want you, and not only that, folks, when we have TV people come to the camp, I see Andy schmying with them. Schmying means, you know, conversing, me. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, these TV people in their next segment are wearing a shirt that says Liberty Lake on. Yeah, really? you're damn right. Really? Well, 
Well, one of the best stories about that is that so there's a uh, there's a local Philly morning woman named Jennifer Frederick yeah. who is just super super cute and engaging, and she and travels. Exhausting. But yeah. her whole thing is that she goes to different places every morning, right? And um, so so we we had her come. I, I guess it was last year or the year before. She came like on the like in the first week of camp, and um, and and as she was packing up her stuff and leaving, and I was kibitzing with her, um, she says to me, she goes, you know, today's my birthday. And I was like, oh, really? She's like, yeah, no one really knows. I haven't like said anything about it, you know? She goes, but you know, the TV producers a couple of weeks ago, they were like, what do you want to do on your birthday? And she says, I looked at them and said, I want to go to effing camp with Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and you gave her some, some nice swag. Yeah. And she went over the zip line. She went yeah. boating. She had a great time. You remember right? when the, uh, the new reporter came last year from 17, uh, we did the segment with the counselors on working at the camp. We did, uh, we did a variety of things that I want to get when we talk more into media, I want to talk about, we always try to create a variety of different stories at the camp. So if a reporter's there, they can do more than one story. But you gave the first thing, she was dressed to the nines in her, you know, couture. Mm -hmm. uh, we dressed her up for the Renaissance and then she's back in her couture. And you said, <laughs> you can't wear that to go on the lake. Next thing you know, she's in a tie-dye Liberty Lake shirt, which is brilliant. She's wearing the swag for the camp. So remember, dress when you're making these appearances and you know uh, sam when you're out there and they're taking the photographs put those t-shirts on with the camp logo make sure the kids have the camp swag make sure that reporters have the camp swag it's perfect I, I love it yeah yeah i mean we we've done some crazy things we um we we <laughs> did a yacht or not right with the uh, cardboard box racing with the uh, duct tape I and all. So nervous. And they, they wanted they wanted to do one but they couldn't come there it was a morning show and the only time they could do it was like at seven in the morning so we had yeah. so we brought in like 30 kids at seven in the morning like That's including great. like five and six year olds you know and we make cardboard so boxes she's, and we wearing, this... she's wearing the mic pack she has all this electricity yeah. and here she is right. in a box that the kids <laughs> have put together and they're pushing her out on the lake at seven at seven a.m freezing live television and i'm right. like this will either go really good or really yeah good. Well, look, they want viewers, you know, they want, they want good content. So, you know, the same thing about a, an article that that's being posted on some random website. They're, and, they're looking for know, content. We're going off tandem, which many of any of my conversations do, but when it comes to public relations and we're talking about all these, we've talked about the grown up camp, we've talked about the politicians, we've talked about uh, the community, we've talked about business synergy, drafting, getting parents to barter, think and this goes probably for everything when it comes to camp, and I'm sure Sam will agree, think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Always, and, and Andy and I sit down at breakfast sometimes and we go for and two hours and we're just riffing. We're thinking outside the box because if yeah. you think outside the box, nothing is impossible. And if you think about that, then you really can create some great campaigns for your family. Right. And, and again, it might not be you. You might not be the out-of-box thinker. Right. You might be a real type A, black and white kind of person, right? But get someone on your staff. Again, and I have this crazy woman, Brandy, that works for me. All she does is come out uh, with out-of-the-box thoughts. So, so, so some are great and some are crazy, you know? Um, but, but yeah, th these out of the, you know, I say to my staff, I say, you know, I want these kids to go home every day from camp and say, mom, you're never going to believe what we did at camp today. Right. So that that's how I sort of frame the experience that kids get at my camp. Mm -hmm. That should be the same thing. If you get a media person to come to your place, you want something that is completely unique. You don't want to be like, Oh, and here's the kids playing softball on the mm -hmm. field. All right. That's nice. And, and, okay. and, you have these, and I know if we're, we're getting into media now, another thing that Andy and Brandy, know that I do when we are preparing for a media event, I call and I say, okay, give me a list of things <laughs> that we can present to this reporter. I, literally a Chinese restaurant menu from column A, column B, column C, because yep. these folks are looking, they're looking for things outside of the norm. When you're talking about television, it's a visual medium. So you really have to, and you don't want to create things that just every camp has. Okay, every camp has Gaga now. In the beginning, when we were one of the few who had Gaga, when we had the guy from Channel 3 out there, we had kids pumping balls at them on live television. That was new. But now every camp has Gaga. What do you have that is different? Andy sometimes has a therapy cow at the camp. That is different. So you <laughs> think 
think about the comfort cow. The, the comfort, comfort cow. cow. I met her. I was telling her my problems. I used to. I, I just, <laughs> she just said moo. I said okay. I'll move on down. I'll, but yeah. the fact of the matter is, is always create a list. So when you're preparing to invite a reporter to the camp, or even a politician, or a community leader, and you give to their PR people, give them a list of a variety of different things. That, that here's our up. calendar, right? Here's our calendar, and right, calendar, for the next for the next know, month. This, and what you'll find is they'll go, oh, this is what happens with reporters. They go, oh, I love you're creating um, Frozen, and Brandy be like, yes, we're we're having this big thing with the kids are wearing different colors and we're riding in these magical cars through the land. Great. Well, we can't be there on that day. So let's simulate that <laughs> on the same day that we bring the magic cow in. Yeah. And we did. <laughs> and we, and we have done exactly. that kind of cacophony, you know, um, some, some other out of the box thinking I, I want to give Michael credit for also is during the pandemic when the news crews were hesitant to come out to camp and, and nobody was in the studio at that point, except for the news crews. We literally brought kids and staff to the, to the actual headquarters yeah. in Philadelphia. And we played, we drew Foursquare onto their, onto their parking lot and played Foursquare with the reporters in masks with the kids, right? And, a and it was cranky, a- And a very cranky television producer. It was an awesome segment. It really <laughs> it was, was. It was great. And you know, that during that time, we were making parents aware that camp is nothing to be afraid of. Camp should be embraced, embraced, especially during a time where poor mm -hmm. kids were stuck in their homes. And then we were able to use that credibility to Andy's benefit because Andy was having these meetings with politicians and these lobbying meetings where he was talking about, we need to keep the camps open. And I really think that the politicians were looking at Andy's dedication and the fact that he was willing to schlep the camp staff and the campers to television stations and really promote and lobby that played a big role in camp staying open. Well, because we were what we were doing is we were building public sentiment, right? right? And they they want to please their their constituents. So if there's enough people saying, "Hey, camp should be open," you know, we should be be able to do this, then they're going to do it. If the, if if all they're hearing is people saying it's too dangerous, it's too dangerous, right. then that's what they're going to go with. So yeah, I do think that our PR efforts, you know, across the country, American Camp Association, and all that, yeah. I I think I think they were were a big part of it and, I, I and, and 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 in that situation there were there were certain people who didn't want to talk about it mm -hmm. because it was too uncomfortable and they, they, and they didn't feel like they could articulate it and and the aca what they did is they went to people like myself and mark transport and a few others who had no problem talking about it and and we did it which is an important thing again not every camp has the kind of person that can be that person but every camp has somebody that gets up on the picnic tables and rallies the troops and all that kind of thing and that's the person who should be the person that's talking the up. ambassador yes right i i want to talk about the aca for a moment because the the communication staff at the aca uh, and i don't know if every camp is required to be part of the aca or how that works but take advantage if you are a member of the aca i i you know andy introduced me to the communications folks over there they are lovely and make sure that they are aware that if you do want to participate in PR activities, where you are and, and how to reach you, because they get media inquiries from all over the country. And they're always looking for camps to participate in these media projects. And they, they're great. And that's how you got the Today Show, if I'm, if I'm correct, when you were yeah. president of the ACA. Yeah. So they're, they're tremendous. All right. Before we go on, again, I have to thank... CRS, Commercial Recreation Specialists, the fine purveyors of the greatest like blow up things and whatever things, like all the crazy stuff that you see blow around camps. Things are great for TV reports. Listen, exactly. That's my segue because you need good visuals, yes. right? So, you know, there's nothing better than these bright yellow and blue things that kids could be bouncing on or slip and sliding on and all that kind of stuff. And, and CRS, you know, you know, besides having all this stuff, you know, I just, I was just at the ACA national conference and we're going to be at tri-state uh, in a couple of weeks. And, you know, these guys are at everything. They're, they're, they're promoting they ACA. They're promoting wild, camps. Do they, do they do your wet and wild event? Is that Although that's, that's the local rental companies okay. that do that kind of, this well, is the people that the sell you the, houses and everything. these are the people that sell you this stuff. So, so, you know, whether it's the zoom flume and their prime carts and their floating obstacle courses in the pools and in the lakes 
and you know the the water trampolines which i can't talk uh, more about i mean that thing is just the greatest you know as, as far as a visual piece right some of these things we're talking about here you know these are investments not just in the enjoyment of of your kids but for pr yeah. because if you because if you get some of this stuff and you promote it to the public and look at what's here. It's just a visually appealing, awesome looking thing that somebody who never did camp before is going to look at that. And that might be the thing that, that, that tweaks their brain and goes, wow, I had no idea that camps did things like this. You know, even if like Michael's talking about the rental companies that buy their stuff from CRS, right. When they come in, take tons and tons of pictures and yeah, we understand that's not your camp every day. That might just be one day the whole summer. That's your carnival day or whatever you call it, right? But take tons of pictures and spread them around social media throughout the year. Not just that night. Hey, this is what we did at camp that day. But on December 12th, right? It says, hey, check out our wet and wild day. Look how amazing it is while you're freezing your Throwback butts off Thursday. in Chicago right now. Yeah. 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 Go back Thursday. Sam, right. Sam will be like, it's snowing now, but remember... Exactly. Those are the best days for those kind of things. So anyway, CRS commercial recreation specialist to find purveyors of the best recreation solutions to keep camp going strong. Check out their website at crs4rec.com. CRS is serious about fun. You know, it's funny. All right, Michael. Uh, I, real quick, I have, I after this, one of the emails that you'll be sent from me today, I just met the editor of a local magazine that you work with uh, quite often. In fact, you're going to be in the March issue of uh, South Jersey. SJ, no, SJ Magazine. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I met uh, Jane. Do you know Jane? She's the- Yes, I know she is. So we were talking about the camp and I said, have you ever been out there? And she said, you know, I don't think I've ever been out there. I said, it's such an amazing visual. I said, wouldn't it be great if we could get, I don't know, some maybe business leaders out there. Maybe if you have award winners, maybe instead of taking those standard headshots, come out. And she said, you know, we often do on location shots. She said, I have Andy put together a Dropbox of some of the unique parts of the camp, because wouldn't it be funny if we have, you know, one of our power women, you know, South Jersey power women going on a zip line or another one hopping on a water trampoline or another one, you know, creating an arts and crafts project. And where is it? Where are they? They're at Liberty Lake Day Camp. Again, thinking right. outside that box and using those visuals right. like what CRS provides. Mm -hmm. CRS, right. Is that the company? Yep. Yeah. Like what they provide. <laughs> And bringing them into the fold for unique, out of the box, right? PRI. Right. So, 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 what Michael's talking about, right, is that you, as a day camp, okay, it's different when you're a resident camp and you're up in the mountains somewhere, and your office is like in the suburbs somewhere, and all kind of thing. You're a day camp. You are part of the community, and you have the opportunity to be pillars of your community. You have the opportunity to be the youth development professionals the people that you that you know that people want to come to and ask advice about children mm -hmm. and about and about youth development and recreation you are the experts don't hide don't hide in your little camp office all right let people know who the heck you are and that means getting out of your comfort zone going to the chamber of commerce going to these networking events meeting people Right. You know, and, and something I've said multiple times on the show, I'm going to say it again, because it's one of the greatest things anybody ever told me, which is if you are the director of a day camp, you should be able to run for mayor in that town. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that doesn't lay it out any better than, than I can ever say it, because. If, if you're out there doing good for people and showing people the good that you do at your place. OK, not just for the people that pay. But for anybody that, you know, wants to utilize your facilities and you're doing great things and you're hosting charity events and you're doing all that stuff that most day camps do, but, but you're doing it in silence and nobody knows you're a tree, you know, falling in the woods because you're not taking advantage of the public relations opportunity that pretty much everything you do has. I want to, I want to give a quick example because I'm looking at the clock and I, another great thing you've done long before I was involved, but I think it's very, very smart if you're an introvert. Many of these nonprofits and community organizations are looking for items for gift baskets. And mm -hmm. Andy created certificates, first time campers only. I believe it was a first time camper only, or if you were a, a camper after that, you got a discount. It was like more of a gift certificate toward tuition. Whereas if you were a first time camper, he was giving away two weeks of camp. 
And what we were finding when we were giving these away is that people were signing not just for the two weeks. They were like, well, I'll take those two weeks. I'm going to sign for another four weeks because Heck, I don't yeah. need to get in camp. And hey, this is a great opportunity. You're giving me half the camp. And you don't have to speak. You don't have to say anything. You just present these certificates. They put them in the gift baskets and people are bidding for them. So yeah. it's, it's a great, another great way even if you are simple, it's simple. And the fact simple. Is, you'd think it out. And I got parents, I got parents coming up to me telling me that it was the, it was Liberty Lake day camp basket and the Bruce Springsteen concert tickets basket that everybody was putting their stuff yeah. into and all the other ones, there was nothing. And then I got parents coming up on me on parent night in the middle of the summer, coming up to me going, Andy, you son of a bitch. And I'm like, what? And he's like, you got us. You hooked us. You yeah. son of a bitch. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, my wife bet on that stupid thing. And now my kid, he's five years old. He wants to be a camp counselor there. So he's going to be with you the next 10 years. Eight, eight, weeks, of, eight weeks of summer for the next 10 yep. years because it gave two weeks up. It's a perfect. So it gave two weeks. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, you did better than the guy who sent the Dennis kids to well, camp. Well, you know, some, that's something that somebody told me once. A camp director told me one time. He said, you know, if you go to a winery, you get to do a wine tasting. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you give people a camp tasting? Again, one out of six kids goes to camp. That's it. Most people have no idea what it is. So, so for those people, you got to sort of, they're all sitting on the fence. You got to push them over the fence. Yes, absolutely. And you do it any way possible. And, you know, you can sit down with your administrative team if you are not an extrovert like Andy, and you can say, I, I think we really want to create an ambassador team. Who's interested in social media? And real quick, as the clock goes, Sam, I want to get back to the conversation about social media and especially probably as much for municipal camps as it's for public camps. With public camps, we deal with our Google My Business, which if you don't have your Google My Business set up, you need to have it set up. And Google My Business is literally a free listing by Google that provides your address and your map and your website. But photographs, videos. Photographs and videos. But it also thrives on reviews. Reviews, yes. reviews, reviews. So we want to stay in that 4.5 to five star review. We need to solicit reviews from our campers, our parents, our counselors, our staff, uh, social media. Also, Facebook, our Facebook pages have the options for reviews. It is important to solicit those reviews. Now, let's talk briefly, Sam, can you give me a case study about social media uh, where somebody's talking about Crystal Lake and maybe it's not super positive and how we can turn that around has that have you experienced that uh yes actually we had a case just a couple weeks ago uh somebody from a few years back that um said her child got sunburned um and she made it sound like it was so horrible and we didn't do anything about it and whatnot but the facts were she stayed in camp the whole summer and you know and we did take care of it, but right. she was driving, scaring brand new parents away mm -hmm. by doing that. But um, we were getting ready to do a statement, you know, trying to not get in an argument on social media when all of our parents jumped on and did it for us. Yeah. So that was great. It was nice to sit back and see our champions champion us without us having to get into the mix and look like you know, sour grapes or whatever. It's outstanding public relations. I mean, I still think I would have encouraged you still to just have a statement in there saying, of course, your child's health is paramount to us. Uh, right. We wish you would have brought this to our attention immediately, but I assure you that our campers, and I know Liberty Lake has, has their own statement about uh, sunscreen. Right. There's a schedule. You know, we give yeah. our children a certain ages uh, sunscreen. We implement it. We send notices home to our parents when sunscreen, uh, we're running low on sunscreen. We have additional sunscreen in the nurses' offices. But I love that. Champions champion parents. But it's really important to our listeners that they monitor the social media. They monitor the Google My Business. So when they see things like this happen, they are able to address them, where it's contacting other parents to address them, whether it's creating that statement. Andy does a great job with that. When I see something, I bring it to Andy immediately and he's on it. You know, he pops on that immediately. Um, it was a parent group. So you've got to watch out for those parent yeah. groups that pop up on Facebook. You really um, should try to have yeah. your intel. You know, right. we, we talk about that a lot, Andy and I. We are, every neighborhood group, we have parents involved. We have them as participants. Many times right now, 
to the listeners who are still looking for children to join their camps. This is the time where every neighborhood group, the parent says, I'm looking, I've just moved to the area and I'm looking for a camp for my four, six and 10 year olds. Who do you recommend? You don't just put on their, I love Liberty Lake Day Camp. You go, Liberty Lake Day Camp offers free busing right in your neighborhood. We have a variety of different uh, uh, activities. You mentioned your child likes art and nature. We also provide hot free lunch, you know, and free extra care, after care. You know, here's a link, here's a phone number. So you wanna use those opportunities, low hanging fruit. And right now, the Facebook is abundant with those. Yeah. Well, just as, speaking for my friend, Jonathan Gold, I mean, he was here. He would also talk about another low hanging, e easy free thing is those like best camp in the county thing, best camp in the this, right? That yeah. Those kind of things. As stupid as those things may seem, for a camp that's really trying to get some traction, they are priceless, priceless. Because, you, you know, just like that parent that just moved to the neighborhood, when they start doing Google searches and they're, and they're looking out for all these different camps and they're, they're copying, right? When they see stuff that says, you know, best whatever, that those, those little things, they don't know. It's, it's just like a stupid review on Google or Facebook. Like, like they, they're just taking it at face value. Than, it's even better than that because the best ofs are reader polls. In most circumstances, yeah. when you have right. a local publication, they're reader polls. That's what, what we're talking Andy about. Andy does is Andy gets the nomination in. We get the nomination in. Then Andy uses the power of social media to get all the camper parents and all the staff and everyone to vote because that's yeah. how you win. You and and vote. and nobody's doing doing that like very few places are really putting together a smart effort on that and if you solicit your parents and just send them the link here just click on this link it'll take you a minute right yeah. you're going to get hundreds of people to do it for you and then you're done you're in and then you got that stupid my, thing that you could put on your website saying, you put in your emails you put it everywhere you want they're championing your parents are championing you, you, it's really important use all of your campers and your families to support your staff and support your camp uh so i said support the staff because of course you need more staff when your camp gets yes. bigger. So you want to make sure that they are endorsing, you know, when Andy's always, I'm sure many camps now are looking for more staff. So you have to go to your parents and you have to go to your camp community. And you have to make sure that they're posting on their social media. I post on social media all the time, articles throughout every neighborhood group. Liberty Lake is looking for staff. Liberty Lake's looking for a skateboarding teacher. Liberty Lake's looking for an art teacher. It's really, really important. Utilize that social media to get what you want, get what you need. So with staff too, because I know that's a big challenge right now. Uh, use yeah. the social media to get your staffing out there, get your staffing needs out there. Michael, you were talking about the snow too. Um, we just had our summer video that we did just came out here in the middle of the winter. And um, so we blasted it everywhere because even I am, you know, when I'm, in the middle of too much work, I'll switch to the video and just watch it one more time and go, okay, that's why I'm doing this. Yeah, exactly. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's remember, some, you know, Andy has these corny videos that I love where he taped them a long time ago for various holidays. You know, he did one for St. Patrick's Day and go, hey, it's St. Patrick's Day, you know. Top of the morning to you. The camp yep. is coming. Camp is coming. Yeah. You know, every holiday, Easter, you know, popping on the Easter, Easter years and hopping around and camp is coming, camp is coming. Use yeah. those opportunities. Well, and and, and you know, it, to quote my son, if he's here, like with TikTok and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which is like the number one medium now, um, it's all about shareability. Yeah. Right. If you could get something shared and get it and get it going somewhat viral and you could come up with some crazy thing, you know, like I like I did recently the uh, when the Eagles were in Super Bowl against. Uh, oh, oh, no, it, was, it wasn't that. It was when the Phillies were in the World Series against uh, the Houston Astros. My friend uh, Steve Baskin has a camp in Texas and we did a little shit talking match with each other. You know, we, we made videos and, you know, it got thousands of views, Absolutely. you know, across the country. You know, it, it just it takes some creativity. And then, you know, this is free. It's free. It's social media. All but Mike, available to you. And I, remember, I, if you're not doing it, your competitor is. Just remember that. Yeah. All right. So I, I just have to corral you for one last thing, Michael. Okay. okay. So for the camps out there. So so we, you know, the listeners of these camps in 39 countries, and, and some of them are very small and have very small budgets and such. And they can't, they don't, they aren't fortunate enough to have a Michael Sachs send his kids to their camp. So for those kind of places that want to they want to get media to come to their camp 
right? They want to talk to the radio stations and the and the TV stations and and whatever and the internet shows. What kind of advice, DIY advice, do you have for these folks to well, get the word out? Know and identify your media landscape. Pay attention. Watch the local news. If you see that there are local feature reporters in a, a television station that is near your camp and they're always out and about every morning. Pick up the phone and say, hi there, uh, my name's John Smith and I'm at Sunnyside Day Camp and we are in uh, such and such a city. We would love for you to come out this summer and spend a day with us. Keep calling. They might not call you back immediately. Email them, send them pictures, send them ideas. Don't be afraid to get in touch with your media. Right now I'm getting a, a Google My Business for, for 1-800-LEMON-LAW, five stars. So <laughs> the fact of the matter is, Take advantage of your local media, but in order to take advantage of them, you have to know them. You have to know who they are. You have to know, okay, this woman is on the, on the education beat. She doesn't normally report on schools in the summertime. Why don't we invite her out to the camp? Think about these things. So if you can identify who these reporters are and what their needs are, you should be able to make a successful pitch. Right. So what Michael's alluding to also, there's local shows that are about kids stuff, right? They're about parenting. Right. They're, you know, hit those people up. Those, those are the, the initial ones. But, but Michael, if, if I'm trying to solicit channel 52, right, which is the big local channel, right? I mean, it could be an intern that's answering the emails. It could be a producer. Like who, who are you going after? Well, you're, you always start with the big name because the big names now, because of social media, they're on social media and they interact. Jen Fred has a very big social oh, sure. media presence. So these reporters do interact with they do. They're all on Twitter. They're all on Instagram and all that kind of thing. And what we've seen more and more of is that these reporters from not the biggest uh, stations, not like the ABC, NBC, right. CBS, Fox, but the next year down, mm -hmm. those people that come, they are one man shows. They are coming with their camera, with you their microphone, maybe problem. with a sidekick if mm -hmm. they're lucky. And, 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 and these are people that have have their own social media. You're right. And you can reach out to them and send them videos and links and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Send, don't be afraid to send this. And real quick, you mentioned a magic word, interns. If you don't have the money to hire a PR person or you don't have a parent that you can barter with and you don't have those people, contact your local college or community college and say, hey, do you have a PR program? I would love to have a PR marketing intern come for the summer. Now, it may require a small financial stipend. I believe nowadays when I interned, I didn't get paid anything. Nowadays you pay 10 to $15 an hour, but I will tell you, if you can get this person out there 10 hours a week for 10 weeks, they will come up with some good well, things. And by the way, Michael, they could be a camp counselor during the day and be doing the other stuff and the rest of the day. Yes. So, so yes, um, we, we needed a social media intern for the Renaissance Fair uh, about five years ago. And Michael put the word out to Handshake and all these kind of things for the local colleges. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and there's like a PR group that you put it through also, right? And they love and, it. There's, and, local, um, and there's local PRSA, PRSA, P, no, let's try that again, PRSSA. Public Relations Student Society of America chapters right. that look for projects to work on for free. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of these organizations, these colleges. Yeah. You yeah. got to pick up the phone. You People, the you know, card. right now, social media, PR, this is a major at every college. We could talk, another, we could, we could talk another two to three hours about the work yeah. that you and I have put together, the work that Sam has. We could talk about that and hopefully you'll invite me back and we'll do some more, but you gotta not be afraid to get things rolling. You can't put it on the back burner. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming up for air. <laughs> we have hit our mark. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for uh, for coming and, and, and spreading the wealth. Um, thank you. And this, thank this, you, this Sam. Is, Lovely meeting you. This is all priceless stuff. And yeah, we'll have to do uh, uh, episode number two. So we want to thank the GoCamp Pro team and AM Skyer and Commercial Recreation Specialists for allowing us to bring this podcast to you. If you like what you hear, you subscribe to the Day Camp Pod on your favorite podcast platform. Check out our show notes from this, all of our episodes at daycamppodcast.com as well as contact info for the show, for Michael Sachs, for me, and for Sam. All right, thanks for listening and making yourself a better day camp pro. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the Day Camp Pod.